Hello! Since arriving in Turkey over two months ago, my husband and I have stayed near family outside of Istanbul. And while it's been so nice to catch up and have a place to stay while we tend to the more logistical things that come with moving countries, we're itching to find a more permanent place to live. However, we haven't quite narrowed down where in Turkey that will be yet. And one idea we came up with to be able to explore more of the country was by traveling with some sort of camper. So join us as we visit a few caravan manufacturers and get an idea of what's available and pricing. The first place we checked out was a caravan manufacturer in the city of Borsa. They had their workshop on site in the industrial park where they're located, and they had a few models open to view. This particular dealer had two versions of pull-behind campers, and each one could be customized when it came to layout and finishes. They used an Elko brand chassis on both models, which we were told by a friend was a better quality brand. The slightly smaller of the two models that they made was called the Camp Sun, and this was 3.9 meters long, or about 12 and 3 quarters feet. And immediately upon entry, I noticed how bright it was. The big windows and skylight made it nice and light, even on a gray and rainy day. All models come with standard electric hookup, but they also had solar power available as an upgrade. I do think the control box could have been more thoughtfully placed in this caravan though. It's kind of odd to try and read it on the side like this. The kitchen area had a couple of these folding sideboards to add some additional counter space, and in the back of the camper were two single bunks, each with their own light and outlet. In the other configuration available to choose from, you can swap where the bunks and the bathroom are. The small bathroom has enough space for a removable toilet and sink, and since this room also acts as a shower stall, the faucet pulls out to act as the hose. The bathroom also contained a small electric-powered water heater. All knobs for the cupboards had a locking mechanism, making them secure while driving. This model had a glass top stove and sink, which were an upgrade, but in my opinion, it's not worth the upcharge. The stove is powered by a small propane tank, but friends that have a caravan say they usually cook on an outside burner when they're at a campground. This way they don't waste the propane and you can just use the electricity that comes with the campground. The ever so slightly larger model available here was called the Camp Star. This model is 4 meters long, or roughly 14 feet. For an extra charge, you can have a retractable awning installed as well. This is a nice touch if you're someone like me who wants to enjoy a nice day outside without getting burned to a crisp. As you can see, the interior of this one is fairly similar, but with a different configuration for the bathroom and the bunks. Of course, the interior finishes can also be customized to your liking, with a few options available for cushion colors, cabinetry, walls, and other finishes. I really like this option of window covering. It allows for privacy, but you can also just leave the screen shut for a nice breeze without the fear of bugs getting in. As with the other model, the seating area converts to a double bed in case you need the extra sleeping space. Of course, there were lots of customizations that could be done to both models that changed the price quite a bit. Things like paint color, full glass ceiling, the electric awning, just to name a few, all added to that price. The Camp Sun started at 165,000 Turkish Lira, or about $8,700, and the Camp Star started at 190,000 Turkish Lira, or about $10,000. The economy in Turkey has been unpredictable, to say the least, for many years, and what's really crazy is that my husband found people online selling a used Camp Sun model, just the basic version, for over 500,000 Lira. I can't imagine something like that happening in the U.S., but with the current wait time of four months, maybe someone will be willing to pay it. 
In another industrial park in another city, we took a look at another caravan manufacturer. From what I could tell, they had only one model, but with similar options for interior configurations as the previous place we saw. The exterior design of this particular caravan is a bit busy for my taste, but it seems like they had many options available. The main downside with this manufacturer is that they didn't offer a large skylight like the other one, and I think that made a huge difference in the overall perception of size inside. Another thing I noticed is that the kitchen tables for these ones were a little bit larger and had legs instead of a pedestal. I don't prefer this since I think it makes it a bit more difficult to move around and feels more claustrophobic. While I do like the option of this bunk that can be lifted up, overall I wasn't as impressed with this manufacturer and felt that the quality was a little bit less than the first one that we saw. Not all edges were lining up properly and there were a lot of small visible things that just didn't look right. So in the end, we decided to check out a few more places. This manufacturer used to make furniture, and I think it shows. The quality of the interiors was definitely the best out of the ones that we had seen up to this point. Like others that we've seen, this one featured a skylight which allowed for optimal brightness in the camper. I love that. This model was 180,000 Turkish Lira, or just under $9,500. In addition, the wait time for one of these was over 5 months, which was the longest wait time that we saw so far. In addition to this caravan, they also made a small teardrop style camper. It's not very practical for what we're looking for, but isn't this thing so cute? My husband and I used to visit various RV dealers back in Seattle to look at all sorts of campers just for fun, and we were always attracted to these little teardrop shaped ones. I mean, how adorable are these little pop-up kitchens? Maybe at another point in our lives we'll look into something like this, but for now it was just fun to see. Next, we headed back to Istanbul to check out a company that manufactured caravans, camper vans, RVs, and even houseboats.
They had one model of caravan available, and it was pretty similar in layout to the other ones that we've already seen. The one thing that was different was that the toilet actually pulled out from under the back bunk. I thought this was a nice touch. The caravan was 300,000 Turkish lira, or about $15,800, but solar power was standard, as was something called Webasto, which is apparently a diesel heater like truck drivers use. Before leaving, we also checked out one of their camper vans. I used to watch Van Life YouTube videos all the time. I don't think it's something I'd want to do long term, but I enjoyed seeing how people would convert their vans to get maximum space out of them. The kitchen in this van felt quite spacious, but I was a little confused by the curved bed. I'm not sure how I'd find a sheet to fit that. This van only had a two-week wait time, but did cost 1.8 million Turkish lira, or about Finally, we stopped at this place in Istanbul. These were by far the best quality builds that we found. This camper van had such a modern look to the interior, and all materials seemed to be really great quality. The cupboards felt really sturdy, and I noticed that the drawers were even soft clothes. Leading up to the bed were some stairs with storage underneath, and if you prefer you could add this board on top to make the bed area larger. Of course, the quality of this camper van was reflected in the pricing, and came in at 1.85 million Turkish lira, or about $97,500. Of course, you have to take into account that it isn't just a place to sleep and live, but also your mode of transportation, and in Turkey, vehicles are insanely expensive compared to the US. Finally, we saw one last camper van. I think this was my favorite overall because of how spacious it seemed inside. The vehicle itself had two rows of seats, which is a bit overkill for us, but it was still nice. And this cute little ladder attached to the side of the bed for easy access to the upper bedroom, which featured windows all over. As someone who likes to cook, I appreciated how big the kitchen area felt and the amount of storage it provided. The bathroom was also really pretty and had tons of storage. I didn't see anything else like this in the other campers that we viewed. It was so bright inside. And lastly, the dining room area had wraparound storage along with wraparound windows. It was really lovely. But the price, again, was reflected in this, coming in at 1.95 million Turkish lira, or about $102,800. Apparently, I have very good taste. Overall, we had a lot of fun checking out some of the camper options available to us in Turkey. Perhaps seeing more makes the decision even more difficult. We're still undecided at this point if getting a camper is the route that we want to take, but I'm glad that you stuck around for the ride and were able to see what sort of campers are available here. I hope you'll join me again in my next video. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks!